Hello everyone, my name is Prophetess Lou. Welcome to the Glory Room. I hope you all are having a blessed day. Let's get started with prayer, then we get on with our devotional. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you for life, health, and strength. We thank you for loving us and taking care of us and doing everything that you do in our lives. We thank you for allowing us to see another week we've never seen. Father God, we ask you to partake in your word, whether it's devotional, whether it's your word. We ask you to give us understanding. We ask you to help us to understand what you're trying to say to us. Father God, we ask you right now to... Bless the readers that are reading it and bless the hearers of your word in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Okay. Key verse today is Romans 5 and 20. God laws has given so that all people could see how sinful they were. But as people sin more and more, God's wonderful grace became more abundant. Topic, overdosing on grace. Affirmations. I'm going to say it and pause behind each one to give you time to say it. I'm confident in God. I'm strong in God. I am loved by God. I am waiting on God. Thoughts. The grace of God is so essential in a Christian life. It is a gift that God has given to us that was given when Christ died for our sins. In today's verse, it tells us that God first gave the law as to rules for people to follow. But as people sin more and more and pay no attention to his laws, he decided to give us abundant supply of grace. I remember one time I went to this new coffee shop in town and they were like a mom and pa shop. And they gave away, they, they gave away free food. After, after a while, I noticed they stopped one day. The woman, uh, the older gentleman that worked there, he, he, we were talking about how they had done certain things to bring in customers and how some customers took advantage of it. They abused it. So they stopped giving a lot of the product away. He said, if, you are not, if you're not careful, people will take advantage of a good thing. I remember him saying this to me. And last night it was, it, it made me think of us as Christians. We have a good thing, which is grace, but some of us overuse it. We abuse it in any opportunity. We don't take any account what we do and how to avoid sin. We, we hear some people say, well, thank God for grace, or that's why we have grace. Grace isn't meant for us to abuse. Grace isn't meant for us to deny the power of God to turn away from a true relationship with God. And in order to have a relationship with God, we must build trust, love, worship, and submit to God. Psalms 25 and 11. For your name's sake, O Lord, pardon my guilt. For it's great. The promise right here said, Lord, pardon my guilt. For it's excellent. He knew he needed God's forgiveness. He knew he needed his love to pass over his life and to see him. We see here that David wanted to humble himself before the Lord. He he knew what he would lose if he didn't go to God. And he knew what he would have been without if he didn't mend things with his father. Sin and guilt can cause us to have a broken connection with God. It's paramount when we sin that we ask him to forgive us. On, but, but on top of that, not to sin on purpose. Romans 6, 14 says, for sin will have no dominion over you since you are not under the law, but under grace. Sin doesn't have to have any control over us. Sin doesn't have to be our master anymore because we are under grace. But we allow sin to be our master when we can't control ourselves, when we can't turn away and turn to God. A lot of times what happens is because we aren't communing with God, we let flesh come in. We have to exercise our grace. Grace is there to help us continue dwelling in his presence. Grace is given not because of our family, not because of what we have done, not because of our title, but because of Christ. No one deserves it at all. Romans 11 and 6 says, but if it is by grace, it is no longer on the basis of works. Otherwise, grace would no longer be grace. Grace isn't built on what we do or who we help, because if that's the case, we would no longer need grace. Grace won't be grace, but grace is based on Christ dying and giving us an opportunity after opportunity to get it right. What more do we need? What more do we need to get it right? But some of us still have to push the limit. Why? Because we feel we can and we shouldn't. Grace isn't given to us to overuse. Grace is given to us in his loving arms. Grace is given to everyone. To everyone. We don't have to do anything to obtain it, but be a child of God. Second Timothy 1 and 7 says, for God, for God gave us a spirit, not of fear, but of power and love and self-control. We always look at this verse for the fear part, but we forget to see he gave us the power to have self-control. Don't get me wrong. It's hard to discipline ourselves, but we must 
it's hard to say no. And that's why grace is there. But we must always use the power to, to have self-control over ourselves. We must try. That's why the, the verse says strive for perfection. We must try to do it. Grace is a beautiful gift. When we are working on developing the sense of not entertaining a particular sin, not for when we know and abuse grace. Today, if you are ashamed of what you have done and don't know what to do, know that you and I both have grace. Grace is given to us for us to be able to stay in the presence of God, for us to be forgiven. Abusing grace shouldn't be what we do. Grace should be appreciated and looked at as an opportunity to learn, lean on God for self-control. Pray for your self-control. Pray for understanding. Pray for understanding of grace. Grace is why I'm here because he had seen fit to give me an opportunity to get it right each day. He knows we are of the flesh. Allow him to help you control your desires so you won't fulfill them. Prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you for your love and grace and mercy. Thank you for forgiving us, giving us understanding of grace. Lord, we don't want to overuse it or abuse it, but we thank you for allowing us to be in your presence, Lord. We ask you not to teach us. We ask you to, to teach us how to have self-control. Father, we want to, to bear the fruit, the fruits of the spirit. We want to change how we handle our body. We, we know our body is yours. We surrender our body to you. We ask you right now to cleanse us, not just our minds, but our hearts, our hands, our mouth. Help us to be compassionate towards others. Help us to love beyond what people do. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. So the topic today is overdosing on grace. Grace is something that I feel that people abuse a lot. And I have had several people tell me, well, that's why we have grace. You know, that's why, you know, I can do what I can do. And, and that's why I have grace. You know, I, I can do it. And, and God, I know God, forgive me. Yes, God will forgive us. That's what grace is for. But why continue to sin? Why continue to overdose on it? When you hear the word overdose, it means someone have either uh, took too much of something or um, overdone something. Um, you, you hear people that took too much medication. They, the, the, the recommended dose is two. They took six. Yeah, some people do that with Tylenol. I have no, no, known some people that the recommendation says take two. They take six because they say it works faster. But why overdo something that you know that is given to us because it's a gift? Why abuse something that God has given to us as a gift? Because if you think about it, the reason why this was put in place, because the law wasn't helping people. People was leaning on their own selves to get it right. They were so proud of themselves. They got something wrong. They was, they was upset. But if they did something right, they were so prideful of themselves. Look what I did. Look what I did. Or, or the law says not to do this. I, I'm not going to do this. And they were so focused on the law, but they wasn't focused on God. So they kept slaughtering animals, animals at the animals. But it doesn't mean he did, done away with the Ten Commandments. He, it, it's just that he gave it to us to follow by. And a lot of us don't even want to follow by the Ten Commandments. And a lot of us is like, well, that's the Old Testament. I don't have to follow it. It doesn't matter. It's in the Bible. The Bible, all of it from start to finish is something we should apply to our lives. See, when he says, do not commit adultery, Jesus came back and he said, he said this. He said, if you look at a woman, he said, it's considered lust. You already sinned. See, we look at as it says, don't steal or don't covet, but we still do it anyway. We're like, well, I can steal. I can, I can do this. I can get away with this. So it's okay. No one seen me. It's okay. But God seen you. Grace is why some of us are here. Some of us have lived such a sinful life that God gave us the opportunity to lean on grace and say, hey, this is grace. I just want you. Take this this gift that I'm giving you. I just want you. And that's what he did for my life. When I can remember some of the things that I have done in my life before I, I gave my life to Christ, I was a heathen. I did everything and anything that I thought I was big enough to do. Well, I, let me take that back. I wasn't that much of a heathen. I just drunk a lot, but still, it was, it was, it was excessive. But I didn't commit to God because I knew that if I committed to God, that I had to follow him. I knew that if I followed Christ, that the things that I was doing in my life were wrong. And I knew that I had to fully submit to God. And I wasn't ready to do that because I didn't, I didn't want to. 
I, I did. We all have that will where we don't want to follow God because we all have that choice if we don't want to follow God. But we all have had that moment in our life where we say, hey, I don't want to follow God. I want to do what I want to do. And that's fine. But what you must understand is that the things that you are running after, the things that you are desiring are empty. God can fill us with his love. God can fill us with his grace. God can fill us with his mercy. I sometimes look at myself and I'm like, man, if I remember what I came from to what I am now, it's all because it's grace and mercy. Grace is there in my opinion. And I really believe this is what the Holy Spirit wants us to understand with about grace, to be honest, is that grace is there. Okay, let's use this as an example. I didn't know stealing, sorry, that's my alarm. I didn't know stealing was a sin. Okay, it's been revealed to me that stealing is a sin. Okay, God forgive me for stealing. He forgives me. That's grace. Okay, I'm working on the desire not to steal. So as I'm doing this, I'm still bumping my head. I'm still asking God to forgive me. He's still forgiving me. I'm still working on the grace, blah, 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 blah. But once I realize that this is not what, this is not what I'm supposed to do. And I realize that that's not what he wants me to do. I stop stealing. I don't continue to steal, even though I know grace is in place. I stop doing it completely because I realize it is wrong. Okay. I'm cussing. I'm cussing a lot. I'm cussing this person out. I'm cussing that person out. The Holy Spirit revealed to me, you cannot cuss. Okay. I, okay. I won't cuss. Forgive me. I'm sorry. Grace is in place. Okay. I'm going through my years, going through my months. Okay. God, I'm, I'm trying not to cuss. I cuss someone out. Okay. I'm sorry. Forgive me. Grace is in place. Grace is in place. So then I stop cussing. I'm giving my sin to God and I'm turning away from it. So grace is in place to keep me, help me stay in line with God. But once I realize that's a sin and I have self-control because I'm building that up with Christ, then I don't cuss anymore. I don't steal anymore. I don't do this anymore. Grace isn't there for us to say, well, God, forgive me. I'm about to do this. God, forgive me. I'm about to do that. No, that's not what grace is for. It's like going to the gym. You go in it, uh, someone, uh, let's just say a bodybuilder goes to the gym, they work on triceps. They train those triceps. They try, train those tri triceps day in, day out, month after month, week after week. They training, training, training. Those triceps get stronger and they get bigger. And that's what we do in the spirit. When we practice holy and righteous living, we are living in a guideline. We are building and training ourselves not to do something that is wrong. Like once you learn if I if I got this right, then when you when you're working on your tricep, you go all the way down, or even a muscle, you go all the way down, you bring it back up. But let's just say I didn't know that, so I'm going to the gym. I'm barely bringing the weights up. I'm barely bringing the weights down. I'm barely bringing the weights up and down. I don't know, but as I go to a trainer, Christ, and He teach me, I have to go all the way down, all the way up. He's telling me, no, you can't do that. Going all the way up, going all the way down. Learn to discipline yourself, going all the way up, going all the way down. Christ is saying, do better, all the way up, all the way down. Day in, day out, I'm going to my trainer, which is Christ. And he's telling me how to live. He's showing me how to live a righteous life. That's just like the person that goes to the gym. They learn how to, to work those triceps. They learn how to hold their they, they weights. They learn what weights to, to use. As we work with God every day, as we go to God every day, as we pray and read our Bible every day, we learn what not to do, which is our trainer. That's what it's about, is everyday process. Even when you go to a new job, you don't know how to work that job, but every day you go to the job. And the job teach you how to do this. They put you on a computer. They show you this. They show you that. They give you a notepad. You're writing those. Every day you learn to do that job because you apply yourself every day. Every day we have to apply ourselves. Grace isn't there for us to do our life, do whatever we want with our life and live a sloppy, miserable, unrighteous life. Grace is there as if we slip. We can say, God, forgive me. That's what grace is for. And I hope I broke down grace in a way that you understood it. So we're going to recap on this before we do a re reference verse. Grace is there to teach us how to live a righteous life. Grace is there to catch us when we fall and pull us back into alignment with God. Not for us to live wherever we want to live and do whatever we want to do and not build on building a relationship with Christ.
Okay. Hope everyone understood that. I, um, yeah, I hope everyone understood that. Let's look at some reference verses that, that really help us clarify on what's, um, what do God, um, the Bible says about grace. Okay. We're going to go to second, we're going to go to Titus 2. Titus is right after first and second Timothy. If you can find first and second Timothy, you'll find Titus. Go two and 11 through 12. Titus 2, 11 through 12. For the grace of God has been revealed, bringing salvation to all people. And we are instructed to turn from godless living and sinful pleasures. We should live in this evil world with wisdom, righteous, and devotion to God. That just confirmed what I just said. This grace is to help us live in an evil world. And it gives us wisdom and righteousness to devote to God. When we live a life of righteousness, devoting ourselves to God, we can live a righteous life. We can live a life of wisdom. We can live a life of of, wisdom, of knowledge. It's when we devote ourselves to God. When we like, just like we just talked about, just like the trainer that goes to the gym or the 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 person that goes to see the trainer, he's devoting himself to the trainer. He's devoting himself to the gym. He's devoting to learn the form of raising weights. He learns to. To how much weight he can put on. He learns how many weights he can lift. It's a daily devotion to the gym. It's a daily devotion to God. Grace is a daily, it helps us keep our daily devotion to God. Not for us to live any kind of way. You see people that, that will say, oh, I go to church. And when they get out of church, they're cussing Sam's. Or when they, or when they get with a Bob in the county, they gossip Sally's. No, we can't be gossip Sally's and uh, cussing sounds. We must ask God to give us self-control where we won't cuss. Give us self-control where we won't entertain gossip. And see, people, I think I've said this many times on the devotion, uh, on the devotion, on the podcast, that people look at sin as big sin and small sin. Oh, that's just a little gossip. No, gossip is just as wrong. Gluttony is just as wrong. When you sit there and you overeat, you are gluttony. It's not, oh, I'm enjoying food. No, you're a gluttony. It is a sin. Adultery is a sin. But when we have grace and mercy, we say, God, forgive me of the sins that I've done. Forgive me of what I have done. I don't know if y'all can hear that thunder. It's about to get pretty bad. Okay, let's look at 2 Peter 1 and 2. 2 Peter 1 and 2. May God give you more and more grace and peace as you grow in your knowledge of God and Jesus our Lord. As we grow in God, we get more and more understanding of what we're supposed to do. Confirms what we just talked about. We learn what we shouldn't do. We learn what we can't do. Because we're devoting our life to God, to a life of righteous and holy living. And some reason when you tell people to live a life of holy and righteous living, they get scared. Because I, oh no, I have to give up everything. It's no fun. And that's what I thought too. But I'm going to be honest with you. I am having the time of my life devoting myself to God. I'm having the time of my life learning what he wants from me. It takes discipline. Every day we need to pray, God, give me discipline and self-control and not to submit myself to sin. Not to think lustful thoughts. Not to overdrink. Not to oversmoke. Not to uh, cuss the way out. Not to gossip. God, give me self-control. Please help me. We must submit ourselves so we can see change. Not continue in that way. I don't know if anyone understands what the word confession means. Confession. Let's look at that word real quick. Because I want to make sure I'm explaining it right. Let's Google it real quick. Okay. Confessing means to... Commit to submit or declare I have done something wrong. It means to admit guilt. When we admit guilt, when we say I did this wrong, I lusted, I drunk, I smoked, I, I, I fought, I'm aggravated. I got angry and I allowed my anger to take control and made me sin. When we admit these things, that means we must stop and wait and ask the Holy Spirit, how do I deal with this anger? How do I deal with this lustful thought? How do I deal with watching pornography? How do I deal with uh, gossiping? 
and he will give you a way to deal with it. Just like the trainer would give that guy, hey, you need to come this many times and lift this many times. Just like he gives him a guideline, God would give you a guideline and a recipe on how to do certain things, but it's up to you to apply it to your daily walk so that you can use grace. And no, you won't run out of grace, but you will not enter the kingdom of God if you are filled with sin. If your vessel is filled with sin, I want to, I want everyone to understand this. That when we become a, a Christian, we hold God in us. We are carrying around the spirit of God in us. And when we sin, we are tainting, tainting ourselves where the spirit cannot stay. No, he doesn't leave us. He just gets very quiet. Because when we sin, we are devoting ourselves to the sinful nature and to the things of the, of, of the flesh. And you won't find God in it. You won't find God in the things that you do that are sinful. You will feel this presence. And, and those of you that are carrying anointing, you will feel the anointing slowly lift off for you. It will slowly dissipate. Why? Because it, God doesn't dwell where there is sin. We cannot taint our vessels for sin. We must learn how to have self-control and say no. Let's look at another verse. Sorry, I had to get back to this screen. Go to John 1, 16. John, chapter John. I mean, book John, verse 1, 16. For his abundance, we will all receive one gracious blessing after another. Let's go on to 17. For the law was given through Moses, but God's unveiling love and faithfulness came through Jesus Christ. Verse 18. No one has ever seen God, but the unique one who is himself. God is near to the Father's heart. He is revealed to us. Let's go back. The law was given to Moses, but God's unfailing love and faithfulness came through Jesus Christ. God's unfailing love, that's grace, that's mercy. That's him giving his son for us, for us to have eternal life. But we are not going to receive eternal life if we live a life of sin. Yes, you have to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ that he rose the third day. You have to accept him, all this. But it's also a small part that we talked about is in Revelation that if you're filled with sin, nothing that's sinful or sin will enter into the gates of heaven. So yes, you can exercise all the grace you want. You can overdose on grace if you want. But if you continue to live a sloppy life, you will not enter the kingdom of heaven. That is just being directly... That's being direct to you. That's I'm putting it direct to you that you will not enter into heaven. Now, some might say, "Well, I think that your mindset is that we sh- we can't do this, we can't do that, and God's grace is allowing us to do these things." No, that's not what God's grace is for. God's grace is for us to be able to correct what we have done, and so if we slip, we make a mistake, we can say, "God, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to do this." Not for us to continue to sin and enjoy our sin. Because you cannot walk in the flesh and walk in the spirit. The two will not mix. Just like oil and water. And it says in the word that empathy, sin is empathy to God. It divides us. It puts a wall up. So that's why you must confess your sins so the wall can come down. So you can enjoy the presence of God. Enjoying God's presence is the most important thing in our Christian walk. We do this by reading. We do this by meditating. We do this by having these quiet moments with God. Now, I know a lot of you, uh, including myself, we all slip. We all fall. He knows this. But that's why we have to discipline ourselves. Every day, ask God, God, renew my mind. God, search my heart. What's in me that I'm doing that could be causing you any kind of grievance? Because we can grieve this Holy Spirit. We can grieve the Holy Spirit while we, how we talk. We can grieve this Holy Spirit how we handle things. We can grieve the Holy Spirit by our lifestyle. 
burning sage, having crystals, reading the horoscopes, um, uh, living a, a sinful life, committing adultery, lusting, gossiping, gluttony. And I know that sounds a lot for, for beginners, especially babes in Christ. That sounds like a lot. But if you want to enter the kingdom of God, we must be pure in heart. It can't be no bitterness, no anger, even anger, anger, being anger, angry, sorry, being angry can cause you to sin, can cause you to have a wall between you and God. So today, if you don't have self-control, ask God, ask the Holy Spirit to help you have self-control against the things that you have a problem with. We all know what sins we deal with. We all know what we struggle with. And that's okay because we have grace, but we don't want to continue to fall in that way. And some sins are harder to get rid of. Some sins are harder to, to break because it's habit. It's comfort. But we must find comfort in a bigger source, which is God. Our main bane, main bond, which is God. So I hope you all enjoy this devotional. I enjoy listening to it and reading it and, and getting understanding from God about grace. Grace is just not for the sinner. Grace is for the, the, the woman that's, that's been running this race for 15 years. This grace is for the woman that's been, the man that's been running the race for 10 years. Grace is for the person that just gave their life for God. It's for everyone. It doesn't matter how rich you are, how poor you are, or what you look like, or who your father was. It's about Christ. It's about connecting with him and letting him know that I'm sorry and I need you. If you need him today, don't just exercise your, your, your grace for sloppy living. Don't just overdose on grace. But learn what you are doing that might be abusing the grace that God's giving you. Remember, Jesus loves you. And I love you too. Have a blessed day.